Welcome to the Spotlight segment. This is a segment dedicated to interviews with developers or interesting happenings in the world of Android. And now for this week's episode, here's your Spotlight. Let's now go ahead though and turn on to the big boy in the room and talking about that Samsung Unpack of 2024. Samsung had that uh, event back on Wednesday, July the 10th. John, O'Sally and Karen, you guys are the big Samsung guys. I'm going to let you guys uh, kick this off. So I want to ask, John, are you excited about the flip? The quick answer is no. <laughs> Why no? I it's just it's so iterative there is flipping <laughs> <laughs> yeah i you know they basically the biggest change is the price like they yeah. raised the prices of both models the flip and the fold by a hundred dollars and i mean yeah it's the new chip um but other than that i mean the flip has one better camera than it did last generation but other than that the specs on these things are basically identical, you know, and then to the, what they were last year. And, um, you know, they're just slightly redesigned, especially the fold has a, a little bit of a larger outside screen. I mean, it's only three millimeters wider or something like that, but people claim it does make a difference for typing and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's basically the only difference. So if I, if I had one, I would definitely not be upgrading. Um, so but, let me yeah. know if I'm wrong. Is it uh -huh. the first one over two thousand dollars? No, it doesn't fall. Fall. First it doesn't phone fall, ever. Like, right? is it the first one ever? Like, so it's technically nineteen hundred now. It was eighteen hundred last year. This is U.S. pricing, obviously, but <laughs> yeah. in the U.S., it was eighteen hundred. Now it's nineteen hundred. I, I can't really say what the prices are anywhere else. Is it the most expensive one ever, or they just yeah, any other? Yeah, it is. That's I what mean, I mean. I think of one. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's like a, f yeah, that I know of. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the most expensive Samsung phone, but uh, Sony takes that crown. So uh, I think Sony's phone, this one, like for twenty five. Sony doesn't have a phone that starts <laughs> at nineteen hundred dollars, though. Correct me they have, they have a $3,500 phone. <laughs> you know, go figure that out. Uh, yeah, but is that like end. the starting version or is that like the one terabyte? No, not, not, not the starting. That's the top of the line. One TV version. Yeah, I'm saying a starting. Like, oh, you starting. Get this phone yeah. No. Any cheaper, yeah. Uh, no, I, I think Samsung takes that crown. Yeah, but does anyone remember uh, when they released the first Fold? What was its price? I don't remember exactly, but it wasn't this high. I think it I was more say than it was that. About 14, I think it was about maybe 1400 no? Or was it maybe, higher? Maybe 13 I'm going to admit I don't know the answer to this question. But it, I w it wouldn't surprise me if it was higher. Do we want to Google it live on the show? Sure. <laughs> let, let me see. <laughs> Would someone do see. that? 1980 So if the first one was 1980 yep. that's more expensive Back in 2019, than this one, isn't it? Back in 2019, according to uh, yep. MSNBC, I think. So as they say, history repeats itself. So we're going back to when it first started. You know, it's been what? That's five years now, and this is the sixth. Uh, All right. So iteration. Uh, it says it was released on. We already got that started. Yeah. All right. <laughs> CNBC. Sorry, I found it. Not MSNBC. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the same link that I was viewing, by the way. So this is the first result, also for me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was two thousand dollars. Now, because frankly, like here in the states, by the time you add taxes, depending where you are, nineteen eighty. If you're purchasing something of nineteen eighty, definitely your taxes are going to be over a hundred bucks. So when it's all said and done, we're looking at almost twenty two hundred bucks. That's too much. Yeah, but that was yeah. the first one. Don't don't forget that. Yeah, so that's the I think thing. now like, we could consider it more expensive. 
Yeah, like they've worked <laughs> out some true. supply chain issues and production. Like it should not, it should not continue to raise in price. It should continue to go down in price. So if that was the fault, and we're folding our hands, how about the flip? How much does it start with? Uh, is it like fifteen, sixteen, or seventeen hundred dollars? It's only ten ninety nine, so eleven hundred and seven thousand. Yeah. But it still went Probably up. Too. It also went up by a hundred dollars. Yeah, well, it seems like every uh, year, though, things uh, tend to be going up, especially last couple or three or so years, if you look at the trend. Um, but yeah. Samsung, though, s seems like uh, last couple of years have been kind of steady. I don't know, maybe this year. Um, I think it's all Qualcomm's uh, fault. Um, are they not using uh, Qualcomm uh, chips in this one? They are. Yeah, so it, it could be that the feeling, the, the pinch uh, from Qualcomm making things a little bit more expensive. And is that global or are they using yeah. XMS in some markets? Yeah, obviously everyone is getting Qualcomm versions, so there won't be any separated versions. It's always been this way with the folding devices, right? Or am I yeah. wrong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just the S series that has been very inconsistent. You never know what you're going to get. So is it safe to assume none of us have pre ordered this phone? Mm, thank you. So no one is pre-ordering uh, <laughs> and getting $50? <laughs> it's uh, been $2,000 that... to get $50. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it, 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 is that the offer? Are they doing the thing they do on the S-Series where they'll match the lower price on the next storage variant? Do you know what I mean? Where you pay... Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they are. are. You get the yeah. free upgrade, so... Um, that that $1,900 will get you the 512 version, which I guess would normally cost over 2000 Like, man, I yeah. think it's 2020 or something yeah. weird like something that. Something like that. Yeah, and same with the flip. So um, that $1,100 will get you the 512 gigabyte version. And if, if you pay what the 512, the better deal is if you pay what the 512 gigabyte version starts at you'll get the one terabyte version on the fold because normally that's like an extra over an extra two hundred dollars just to get from like 512 to um one terabyte so that's the better deal you know if you're going to uh um, if you're going to spend nineteen hundred dollars you know pay if you pay an extra uh hundred and twenty dollars you'll get the one, one terabyte TV. version yeah. yeah that's what i'll do Oh, so you are pre-ordering. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news. Warren is switching the same. Oh, boy. No, you know, I wouldn't. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm waiting for my own unpack, you know, coming up in August. But frankly, so I think, though, that the one thing that kind of surprises me, I'd always been under the impression that every app works on the outer um, screen of the uh, fold or the flip. Uh, but they were mentioning the fact that uh, they are going to be supporting Gmail um, on the outer, you know, screen. But right now, by default, it's not. So it's going to be happening. So that took me by surprise. Yeah, for the flip, um, you can make any app work, but you have to use, you have to install some good luck modules to get that to work. So they're saying out of the box now they've added a couple more widgets, I guess, that's what they call them, to the cover screen. Another thing worth mentioning, which uh, Samsung didn't talk about, is that uh, the Flip does not support DEX, D-E, capital X. Yeah, that's disappointing. <laughs> We're in $1,100. Yeah, that's so silly. Didn't the yeah. other one uh, support that, though? And if it did, why would no, they I don't make think it? it ever has. Oh, I it never wrong, had. Okay. Yeah, it, it, but still, it should. like. Other phones with the same processor support, like there's no technical limitations. It could, they just don't want it to. I know we've talked about DEX before, but do you want to remind everyone what it is? It's sort of like a desktop experience where you can um, wirelessly connect to a display and then um, you can either use your control as like a touchpad. Um, obviously, this is mainly sighted users like for as a mouse pad type of thing or you could just do other things on your phone while you still 
have whatever going on the TV and you know it it kind of makes it more of a desktop top experience with the projection like you can have different windows um floating windows and that sort of thing okay and just and going back to the flip of the storage variant is there a one terabyte flip or is that um, a full thing no i don't think that the flip has a one tv does it yeah, i think it's just a full so yeah that's what i said yeah now talking about the decks though it surprises me because it should actually in reality be the one that would support that decks because I have this little flippy thing. Um, I could just put it <laughs> down by my computer and use it as a mouse pad, like you said, John, you know, connect it to my computer and give me a bigger screen. So um, that should be the one that should actually have that DeX support. What's Samsung doing here? I think Samsung made a mistake by not allowing it to support DeX. Uh, one thing is that it will be supporting seven years of updates. So 700 versions like the S series devices, the S24. And uh, another thing that the Fold now has a better IP rating uh, regarding dust resistance. So it's not the best, but it is still better than how it was before. I don't remember if this is also with the flip. Someone could give this information. But the Fold now is with better dust rating. So this could just give people slightly better experience with respect to dust uh, exposure or if the phone is exposed to to big particles of dust has, has it gone to 57 what's it at can you remember the ip i think it's 47 so oh. it's it some people say it's dust resistant some people say it's not it depends on the size of the dust <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And that's the point, but not 50. No, it's it's less than that. Well, so it's a little bit better than what it used to be, though, kind of gradually getting there uh, with uh, each uh, iteration of the fold and, and all of that. So uh, because I think it's important that it supports that uh, IP because uh, you're folding it and something can get in the fold in there. So it is nice to see that it's getting improved. Maybe next year it will even be better. Well, shall we talk about the watch? Uh, we got two watches in the uh, 7 series, don't we? Yeah, we have the watch 7 in two sizes, 40 millimeters and 44 millimeters. And then we have the watch ultra in 47 millimeters, I think, for Ah, that's the El Macho. That's the kind I would like. Yeah. And I don't, does anybody remember the exact processor they have? It's a new processor. It's three nanometers. So it's supposed to be three times faster than the last generation of watches. I think it's Exynos uh, 1000, isn't it? Not sure, but it's definitely an improvement. And the good thing is, that all three watches have that processor. I think their specs are very similar. They all have um, 32 gigabytes of memory now, or storage, I should say. And I think two, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's two gigabytes of memory now. Yeah, and, it's two gigs of RAM. Yeah, so basically, if you want the Ultra, you're just paying for a larger screen, better build, uh, brighter screen, um, and a bigger battery. So you don't really lose out. You can, for that $300 uh, entry point, oh, we didn't say the prices. So it starts at $300 for the regular watch seven. And then depending on, you know, if you add Bluetooth or LTE or get the larger size, you know, it, the price is gonna go up in increments from there. But then the, uh, the Ultra only comes in an LTE and it's six, $650. I know some people have kind of, you know, been bemoaning the fact that Samsung is making that for $650. And, you know, frankly, I really don't think that they're kind of being, you know, insensitive here, uh, you know, jumping from 300 base model, you know, like the regular small one to the Ultra uh, at 650 
you know, doesn't Fruitvale, you know, and, and when I say Fruitvale, I'm talking about Apple. Higher, doesn't Apple it? have their own, like, higher than uh, that? And why is yeah, it that some people want to give uh, Samsung grief over this? Yeah, it was north of $800 when it launched. I can't remember exactly what it was, but the Apple yeah. uh, watch ultra was high. And this is this is just as good for, from a hardware standpoint. You know, it's same type of build quality, same type of like water resistance, and it's got an even brighter screen. It, it, <laughs> you know, people have said that not only did they copy Apple's name for the watch, but they copied like it now has an action button. Of course, it's not called that. <laughs> it's now it looks a little more square, although the screen is round. It's, the screen is round, but yeah. The, the part that houses the screen is like a squircle. So it's like a, a rectangle with uh, yeah. round corners. So they're saying, and I'm not going to deny it. You know, they're sort of copying Apple's aesthetic a little bit, although, um, <laughs> yeah, but so it's, it's, it's a better watch for the money for sure. I think. And you know, that housing is uh, titanium grade four, you know, for the ultra, uh, it's basically a, an outdoor, if you're someone who likes rough and tumble out there, probably this is the one to go for. Otherwise, like you said, John, that's what distinguishes it uh, from the other one, besides the fact that it has a bigger battery at 590 milliamp to the other one that's smaller and all of that. So now, frankly, if I were into Samsung uh, ecosystem, this is the one I would get because the size is there. You, you've got great titanium housing and then you've got big battery it's a great watch so if you're into that probably that's what i'll go for but it's a little expensive but you know what if you really want it you want to get it i'm curious to see i mean i haven't i haven't pre-ordered i'm i'm i don't know if i will i probably won't hopefully i won't <laughs> but i'm curious to see what people think of talk back on this you know the processor is they claim it's three times faster but you know the real question is how much will that improve the talkback experience because i i don't i mean i i don't shy away from saying that i don't like talkback on phones you know just i mean not phones i don't like talkback on watches in the same way i don't like talkback on google tv it's just it's a horrible horribly slow experience so i'm curious to see if it improves that at all i hope it does yeah, well, John, you know, though, um, unless one gets it and tries it, you know, we cannot judge a book by its cover, you know, or because of the past. Um, I would like to believe, though, that with the improvement uh, in the processor, that it may make a little bit of a difference. Now, I may be wrong, but uh, something tells me, my gut feeling says it may be a tad better than the experience that we've had uh, prior till now. Uh, so just based on that, maybe you need to get one and unbox it and then send baby back home to mama. Well, it depends on which model of watch you buy. But if if I were to go with the Ultra, they'd give me 350 for my current watch, 6 Classic. Uh, but if I just bought the base model, obviously they wouldn't give me 350 because it doesn't even cost 350. I think it's like 150 or something they give you. But yeah, and that reminds me... Um, I wanted to mention they've once again removed the rotating bezel. So there's no, you know, they did this with the the Watch 5 series. You know, they didn't have yeah. the Watch 5 Classic with a rotating bezel. People got upset. And then with the 6 series, it came back. And now, the, again, there's no rot rotating bezel. So if that's something you're a fan of, that physical rotating bezel, um, then you probably aren't going to be excited about these. I mean, obviously, it doesn't affect the functionality because they you can still use a digital bezel. So when you put your finger around the edge of the phone, it kind of vibrates to mimic like turning a bezel. But um, yeah, if you like that physical bezel, it's once again gone. I mentioned I'm not a watch person. And something that kind of interests me which Samsung has announced is the new ring. So if you like to track your health, you know, your steps, your heart rate, your sleeping, that type of thing, you can now do it with a ring. So it's a $400 ring that they've introduced. Is anybody interested in this at all? 
Well, maybe single people like Sally and Carrie and, you know, get a new wedding band if you have a little squeeze on the sideline uh, that you're going to be tying the knot with, then, uh, you know, uh, maybe a $400 wedding band, uh, that would sound good. Uh, Sally? Well, I don't know. <laughs> That ring that baby, man. Put a ring yeah, on it. I, I'll ring it, yeah. <laughs> on the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five Samsung rings. <laughs> yeah, how long till we see uh, TikTok videos uh, or YouTube shorts of somebody proposing with one of these things? It, it won't be long at all. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, Sally... You know, you want to ring it, ring that baby up. Uh, do you guys think, though, that $400 is a little expensive for a ring? I don't know. I'm not a ring person either. Um, so uh, when it comes to jewelry, you know, just count me out. But uh, uh, probably it's not too much of a price. And yet in the same breath, it could be too much. Uh, What's John, what do you think? Uh, or What's Ed? it made of? Uh, I, I, the description is good. Um, I think it sounds like it's a solid uh, device. But yeah, but it, like material, it's not made of gold? anything precious, precious that I no. <laughs> know of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, that, yeah, that, 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 well, well Ed, Ed you're thing. not going to be expecting to find a gold <laughs> ring for four hundred bucks. Come on, bro. So <laughs> the question, like you say, is it expensive? Like compared to what? There aren't any other smart rings out there. So all we're comparing yeah, it to exactly. is precious metal well, rings. <laughs> I'm just thinking of a ring, you know, just an ordinary ring, you know. For example, of course, this is a smart ring, but I, I don't know. Maybe because I'm not into rings and all of that, I have, you know, I don't have a clue as to how much these things cost. So to me, four hundred bucks, uh, kind of sounding a little steep, and yet in the same breath, like I said, it may just be a misconception on my part. Yeah, but typically you're... rings are made of precious metals, aren't they? Yeah, so you're not going to be wearing this as jewelry. You know, it's no. you just think of it as a as a tracker. Um, you know, it's, I, I think it's an okay price, I guess, you know, starting out, obviously it's going to be, we mentioned earlier, the original price of the original fold, you know, these things are expensive at first and then eventually the price will come down, but you know, when you compare it to the watch seven, which has, um, you know, it starts at $300 and you get way more functionality out of the watch. Uh, you know, it seems expensive there, but I don't know. I, I need to wait and find out how much functionality this has because, you know, if you can, it depends what you can do. If you can, obviously it has no interface on it, so you can't interact with it. But if you could go in the Samsung wearables app and do things like track workouts in the same way, like say what type of workout you're starting, start it, um, have it record your workout and that sort of thing. You know, I might, I, I can see why this would be very interesting. Cause I, like I said, I'm, not a watch person and the main reason is because i don't like interacting with the mo the watch it's not a pleasant experience for me but you know if i was into all that other health data which i know a lot of people are not into it but you know it'd be a nice way to get all that without having to deal with the watch we should look at this differently actually the ring itself is light very light they are able to put all of those sensors inside this ring, which is not big, which is, according to, to some people, it is an elegant uh, piece. So it's good. For this reason, I think it's acceptable. The price is acceptable uh, because we are talking about less space. But in the meantime, they were able to add all of those things into this ring. And also, it's the first iteration, it's the first device, so there is no competition, no real competition. I don't know if there is any Chinese company uh, that did this before, I'm not sure. But I think that this is, at least it's a, it is the f first mainstream device that has this form factor. So for this reason, I think it's completely acceptable, the price. Well, it's not for me personally, because I hate rings. And even if I decide one day to be crazy and to get married, I will not wear a ring, so <laughs> I hate rings so much. So, but this doesn't mean that for most people, this could be 
the better choice compared to the watch or for some people. So I think that we should give it time. We should see uh, how it how it goes. But I think that it will be an interesting device. Yeah, and I think that um, I don't think we mentioned the battery life. They say it, it can get up to a week on a charge. So, you know, that would also be that's also one of the things that people don't like about watches having to charge it every day. So, you know, if you could get away with charging this thing, obviously, like, we'll find out. If you can get away with charging this thing only once a week and you could just make that part of your routine, that would be a lot more convenient than having to worry about charging your watch every time the battery, either either every day or every couple of days when the battery starts getting low. It is just the, the point of put it and forget it. This is the, the, the most important point about it. Just put it, not like the watch, it's already light. It's already taking time to, to need char a charge. So just put it as any regular ring and complete your life. So it's, and continue your life. So it's something, I think, very interesting. Yeah, that's definitely the appeal of it, I think. I think, so you mentioned competitors. There's one competitor, I think they call it the Aura Ring. I don't know the details of it. I don't know how much it costs, um, but I think they might charge a subscription because Samsung made a big deal of saying that this, and we should point out, this does not require any sort of a subscription. Um, you know, a lot of, some uh, companies like to charge you for access to your own data, but luckily that's not gonna be the case here. Does the ring have any functionality by way of sensors or health data that the watch does not? Or is it the kind of the, the convenience, the form factor and the battery that takes it above the watch in price? As far as I know, it, it doesn't. I mean, people have said that just the fact that it's on your finger means you'll get a more accurate um, heart rate. But the actual, physically, the sensors, I don't think they're like anything better than what you would get in a watch. Samsung said that uh, it is, well, you, you will get the best of the ring when you use it and use a watch at the same time. So they want you to buy the ring and the watch and use them together. So they say that you will be getting the best and accurate uh, observations and stuff when you use them both. When you give Samsung a load of money, in other words. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Me with the fold as well. It would be amazing on the folds. So you'll get all your health measurements in a lovely graph better than on uh, a smaller screen. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you buy all of their lovely products? <laughs> Beautiful. Now, Karen, you kind of answered my question, though. I was going to be asking you a question. Uh, I was going to say, hey, so if someone comes up to you and wants to ring you up, uh, would you accept this uh, Samsung ring? Uh, but I think you've answered my question earlier on there. So uh, if you are thinking of ringing Karen up with a Samsung ring, I better think twice. Well, there's one condition that I, I can't just, I can't say that I will put this, like, it's not important. No, it's the most important thing. It's the most important, important requirement. I'm not the ring person. I will never wear a ring, whether it is a diamond or whatever. <laughs> well, so I am making a confession here. I'm not either. I don't have one. <laughs> wow. so, uh, yes, That's great. I, I'm not a ring person. I just don't see me wearing a ring. It's like such an inconvenience for me. I don't know why. I'd never like rings. So forget that. Because because it because you don't want the ladies to know. <laughs> he's got all his he's got all his fleezies, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> For me, I don't mind. I don't mind wearing a ring. I don't notice it's there. You know, if it fits like a regular ring, and it's not like extra clunky, I would be fine with it. But like I mentioned earlier, I'd want it to replace the watch. So if you needed the watch, like or needed the watch for a better um, accuracy or all the features, like Samsung is saying, then you know, count me out because I would want it to replace a watch. That would be the reason for getting it for me personally well samsung did not just stop here right they brought us those earbuds those of you that like those i don't like sticking anything into my ears but the cry out there is that this is a copycat of the fruit veil the apple uh earbuds uh 
what are your thoughts? I don't care what it looks like. All I want is some good sounding, right? It, yeah, it is. So it is flat out. <laughs> They're copying because they have not had any earbuds in the past that I can recall that have ever had like the stems on them. Um, so they are definitely copying Apple right down to the fact that they offer the um, non-pro version that just sits in your ears and doesn't have like those ear tips and it still allows you to like hear what's going on around you. And then the pros have like the ear tips on them that go in your ears and then they cancel, have noise cancellation, and that type of thing. So yeah, the um, US prices are uh, 180 for the Buds 3 and 250 for the Buds 3 Pro. Yeah, see, I, I could just not see me buying um, something to stick in my ear uh, for that price. I, I, I don't know. It's just, I remember back in the day, you know, the Walkman, and I used to have an earbud, you know, that hangs on your ear or whatever. I didn't like those things, but, you know, and now they've become popular to where that's what people like. I'm still old-fashioned. Give me over-the-ear kind of uh, headset. I know it's kind of sounding old school, but... I just don't like anything sticking into my ears. I don't care what it is, whether it's a, a ten thousand dollar, whatever, and how great it is. I'm not going to put it in my ear. Speaking of on ears, we'll get back to Samsung in a minute. And I haven't been on for a while. I've got, I, I got the new Sonos headphones, the Sonos Ace, recently. Nice. You stick them in your ears, uh, Ed, or is it no, um, no, ear? no, no? I don't like. I don't like in ear. I like on oh. ear. So oh, over good. ear. Good. Yeah. So uh, I'm not crazy then. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Over, over here, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan. Uh, I can never get the tips to fit. I've got the um, the AirPods Pro. I can't remember like whichever one the first AirPods Pro were, and I I tried the different ear tips. None of them seem to fit especially well, and especially if you're moving, they seem to want to come out. What I heard about the Samsung Buds three or read about them was that they're supposed to use AI to adjust sound based on your ambient setting i don't know if that's just in noise cancelling or or transparency or anything else has anyone else seen that yeah. on other products yeah it's supposed to um i guess you could turn it on and off if you just don't want it to have control of it but what it will do is even if you have noise cancelling enabled and it hears something that it thinks you should hear like a siren it will temporarily disable your noise cancelling so you can hear the siren and you know, if it's if you have ambient on, ambient mode on where you want it, or transparency mode, whatever they're calling it, where you want to hear your surroundings, and something's like ridiculously loud, like construction sounds, it'll it will lower those sounds for you. So I think that's what's going on. Do you think I could teach you to recognize the sound of a drinks cart on a plane? Yes, I definitely want noise cancelling to be turned off when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, yes, otherwise I might miss it. When the drinks cart comes round, that noise cancelling oh, the drinks, off immediately. Yeah, immediately. Definitely. <laughs> I, I hear you. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, seriously, and I think another part of the, uh, the buds is the fact that now I think uh, the translation, so it may be like your it, another language or whatever, you could hear that in your ear, you know, the translation. I don't know how that works, but I think that's a good thing, maybe would make people buy it. I don't think that this is a feature that will be a deal breaker or a, a, dis a deciding factor for people. I think it's okay, it's a good one, but I don't think that it's the most important aspect about the Buds 3 or Buds 3 Pro. So we should, I think, wait to see if the Buds 3 and Buds 3 Pro are offering better experience compared to how it was, how it was the, the case with the Buds 2 and Buds 2 Pro, because both Buds 2 and Buds 2 Pro were not good with respect to microphone quality. Well, Samsung said that uh, Currently, the Buds 3 Pro is able to differentiate your voice uh, between your voice and the noise around it, and it's able to separate them better, which was a real weakness in the Buds 2 Pro and John, because you have the, the Buds 2 Pro, you are able to understand exactly what's the point here, because whenever we had some noise with the Buds 2 Pro, the, the, the voice itself, the, our voice would degrade so much, 
and the clarity would be impacted so much. So if they are really uh, able to make the separation better with the Buds 3 Pro and the Buds 3, I think that this will be the real thing that, that will make people just upgrade. Other than that, I think if they are just giving you the same experience with the microphones and with the noise cancellation, I mean, the noise cancellation when you are in a call, if it's the same experience that we had with the Buds 2 Pro, then I think forget about it. Yeah, I think it will. I mean, only time will tell, but I think it will be better because just the physics of it, you know, having that stem out of your ear with the microphone on the end, like it's just easier for it to isolate your voice because, you know, it's not trying to hear your voice from inside your ear, basically. So I think it will be a little bit better. We'll just have to see how much better it is. The thing I'm concerned about is, and it, you'll know what I'm talking about, Kareen, Samsung, or maybe you won't. I don't I don't know if it does it on your phone or not, but with the Buds 2 Pro, you cannot disable absolute volume, and that's a deal breaker for me. I on my, When I use my Buds 2 Pro with my Samsung phone, it does not respect that setting, and it's so annoying. So if I did pre-order the uh, Buds 3, uh, but if it is the same and it doesn't let me do that, then I'm sending them back. Indeed, it's for me a deal breaker as well because it is so, so, so annoying. And it's happening only on Android 14. As you mentioned, and as I mentioned before, it's just impacting Android 14 devices. Well, for me, I'm using the Buds 2 Pro much less currently because of this bug. Actually, I, I just, like, I'm listening to music, then I lower the volume. And uh, after that, I use, like, I use my, my screen reader. And then after I want to go back to and listen to my music, the volume will be loud because, because of this bug. So I think that if I continue using the Buds 2 Pro, I will be having a, hear, a hear, hear, hearing impairment. So, so like, it's, it's something terrible, really. It, it is like blasting in your ears very loud because you are using the screen reader. And when you lower the volume, you will not be able to hear your screen reader when the media is playing. So it's something terrible. Yeah, I don't use mine with my phone either. I So if I pair them with my Pixel phone, they work fine. If I use them with my computer, they work fine. You know, It's just Samsung intentionally breaks it when you use their devices with this pair of earbuds. And it's the only pair of Samsung earbuds that I've come across it on. So I, I'm hoping and praying that it's only a one-time thing, that they're not like going to do this on all of the earbuds going forward because... Like I said, I will return them. Do you have earbuds that uh, are respected when it comes to absolute volume on a Samsung device? Yeah, every every other pair I've ever tried. <laughs> yeah, I'm yep. also using the only three buds Pro three. Uh, I recently bought it, and it it really works fine with all the settings. And uh, it gives me great noise cancellation. So I'm not super excited for a Samsung, but I didn't. I think even if they have the uh, but Pro 3, it won't be as good as the one that I have right now, honestly. And I wanted to mention uh, the trade-in values are pretty good for these too, especially <laughs> because I'm like I'm always reluctant to sell earbuds. Like it just mm. feels weird. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I'll trade them in and uh, then let Samsung worry about selling them or recycling them or whatever. But the offers that they're giving is if. And I traded in my Buds 2 Pro towards the um, Buds 3, and they give me $100 off for that. And what something else I noticed is that um, if you select Apple as the brand, they don't let you choose the model. They just call them AirPods and say they'll give you $100 for them. So even if you have like the first-gen Apple AirPods just like sitting around somewhere, you could trade them in for $100. Uh, credit towards it. Oh boy! Just on selling earbuds, I've always waxed lyrical against them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you getting the uh, Buds Three Pro or the Bud Three, the regular model? I was not originally going to admit this, but I ordered them both. <laughs> I want, I wanted the Buds Three, um, 
because I like the open, most of the time I like the open ear concept. I like hearing what's going around me. But then I saw a review somebody did that said basically the, um, the transparency mode on the pro model is just about as good as what you get with Apple's um, AirPods Pro. And those are good enough. Like when I turn on transparency mode with those, it basically I can hear everything just as well or just as good as if I did not have earbuds in. So I don't know. I, as of now, I've pre-ordered both. I don't know if I'm going to let them both ship or if I'm going to cancel one or if I'm going to keep the ones I like and return return the well, ones bring, bring them bring them together to compare them because i was i was thinking seriously to see what will be the trade-in value for the bots 2 pro and it will be great for me to know to know a comparison between the bots 3 and the bots 3 pro so i if i if i'm going to replace yeah. my bots 2 pro i'll know what to do the the, the thing is though these these trade-in values probably are not going to stay this way after launch like you have usually you have to pre-order it to get these values but if i happen to get them before launch, because sometimes they ship these things out earlier, I will definitely let you know. Um, yeah, I might, like I said, if I end up letting both orders ship and both of them have the uh, absolute volume issue, I, I, won't, <laughs> I won't hesitate to return them both. So, I mean, it's just, that's been, that annoys me so much. Complete with wax and chunks. So during this unpack, there was a missing component that Samsung usually has, and that's the tablet. For some reason, it was uh, crickets this year. What's the deal, John? Well, it's they don't do tablets every year. They usually do them every 18 months. So um, the last tablet was released alongside the... Flip 5 and Flip 6, so that means the next generation, if they stay on their current pace, it will be released with the S25 series. Ah, I see. Okay. Well, good strategy. Well, I was wondering if we should say anything about AI. So the press release from Samsung made us on this, and they said, AI, whatever that means, will roll out to 200 million Galaxy devices by the end of this year. Uh, anyone got any thoughts on that or how that actually happens? I think what this would mean is that a lot of the uh, the phones, even probably including some of the A-series, good A-series phones, uh, will also be getting the AI. And um, I don't know, unless they're changing their minds uh, regarding the fact that, you know, it would then start to be uh, charged for, was it not till like 2025, then they will start to charge for it? Or they were saying, I mean, they didn't come out clearly to say they're going to be charging, but you have it free till 2025. So I don't know if they would be charging for it when they roll it out to uh, those many phones, that would be a lot of moolah coming in. John, any thoughts? I don't know how much devices have shipped of what, but, but I'm, I was assuming, um, you know, obviously they've they've said these these Flip Six and Fold Six have new AI features that will also be coming to the other um, the Flip Five and Fold Five later, and um, you know they have it available on the S twenty four series, S twenty three series. And do, did it go back as far as the S22? I'm not sure. Does anybody know? Well, from the sounds of it, it sounds like they are going to be pushing it out to a lot of their phones. That's what they're saying. So I think... Yeah, the thing is, I don't know, like, I didn't do the math. I don't know what 200 <laughs> million means. Like, how much phones do they sell? You know, if it's, it sounds like a lot, but it could just yeah. mean all well, of their premium phones, because that's how much premium phones they sell. They couldn't have sold 200 million, uh, you know, 24s or 23s or 21s. So you combine all of those. I, I don't think they sold that much. So uh, I deduce that they'll be pushing that to other series uh, as well, especially some of the good A series. Yeah, and they didn't say what AI features, which devices will be getting. I mean, they might let some of the lower end devices get some features, you know. Yeah. So it's, 
I'm not taking anything from it. You know, they're just <laughs> they're just trying to impress their shareholders because everybody's AI, 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 and they want to say we have the biggest number of AI. 